three different types of looping structures over the next couple of days. Um, and even though there's three different types of looping structures within Java, we're going to focus on how they're very, very similar. So as we write code for these next couple of days, I'm going to add extra comments and extra labels um, that focus on like, hey, here are the four parts of every looping structure. And we're going to see that they're just located in different places um, based on the type of looping structure. So for each structure, and we're going to start with the while loop, I'm going to show you like a flowchart diagram. We're going to write a couple of examples together. And then I'm going to show you a technique for tracing through the code by hand, um, which will help you better understand the flow of execution um, as we go. And then I'll, I'll point out different pitfalls we tend to run into along the way. So we're going to start with the while loop. Um, we're starting with the while loop because I think it's the most straightforward. Um, it's also extremely similar to the while loop in Python. So that's a shared experience among some of us. Um, so the while loop is, uh, if we look at the flowchart here, we start with some condition being evaluated. Um, this is a Boolean expression, just like we had with an if statement. Um, if it evaluates to true, the body of the while loop is executed, just like it was with an if statement. However, the difference is, unlike with an if statement, where then we move on to the next part of code, in a while loop, we then return to that condition and we reevaluate it again. And if it's still true, we execute the body of the while loop again, and then we reevaluate it again. Eventually, hopefully, it evaluates to false. Um, we skip over the body of the while loop and we execute the code that comes after. So let's see an example together of what this looks like. So um, go ahead and open up the iterations class in your BlueJ project. Iterations. And we're gonna just create a series of public static void methods like we did before, um, because that's the easiest way to do these examples. All right, so let's start with our first example. Public, static, void, while, example. Let's start with our basic summary of a while loop. That way it'll be right here in your code for you to refer to later. So what does a while loop do? It evaluates a condition. Uh, by condition, I mean a Boolean expression, same idea, just like an if statement. And then quite simply, if it's true, it executes the body of the loop and then re-evaluates evaluates the condition. If it's false, it skips the body. That's important. Body never runs if it's false initially. So if it's false or whenever it's false, it skips the body and continues with the code that comes after the while block. We are going to write um, code that prints the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 using a looping structure. And we're going to do it with a while loop. We're going to do it with a for loop. We're going to do it with a do while loop. We're going to do the same thing in three different ways to help you compare and contrast them and better understand how each of these loops work. So we're gonna start here with a while loop. Um, we're gonna declare a local variable of type int called count, and we're gonna initialize it to one. I'm gonna tab over here to the right, and I'm gonna add a little end of line comment that says initialization. So there are four parts to each looping structure, um, and we're gonna label each of those four so that we can compare and contrast them between the different types of loops. So we're initializing count to one. That's how we get started. Now we'll do our while statement. The while statement syntactically is similar to an if statement. We have the keyword while. We have parentheses in which we put the Boolean expression. While this is true, this, the code will continue to run. So while count is less than or equal to five, run the body of the while loop. And I'm gonna tab way over here and label this as the condition. With a while loop, the Boolean expression, that condition 
that tells us that if this is true, we keep looping, okay? It's not the condition under which things stop, right? When true, we keep looping. While this thing is true, run this code over and over again. Okay. Um, sometimes uh, that can be a little unexpected. So while such and such is true, keep going. Loop, 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 loop. All right, inside the loop, let's just print out the value of count. And we're going to label this as the body. Our body could have many lines of code. Um, we're just going to focus on printing the value of count. And then at the very end of our while loop, we're going to increment count by one using the plus plus operator. It's the same as saying count plus equals one. And this is where we update the loop variable. Our condition could be a little bit more complicated. This updating of the condition could be a little bit more complicated, but for now we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to increment count by one. And then after this loop, let's print that we're done. So type this, compile this, run it, make sure it prints one, two, three, four, five, and then done. Um, so we know that we've got the basic loop working. I'm gonna run it really quick too, just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, done. Excellent. Good sign. Yes. So this is the example we're gonna do over and over again. But we could also, I also wanna show you that we can do more sophisticated things. Um, but as we start doing more complicated while loops, we just have to be careful. So let's write another example together, public static void while example two, very creative. And let's again initialize count to one, and I'm gonna label that initialization. To be clear, I'm gonna do all these extra comment labels for like two days as we get used to our looping structures, and then I'm gonna stop doing it because it gets annoying. Um, it's here to provide support for us as we're getting comfortable for it. Once you're comfortable with these looping structures, you won't need these comments anymore because you'll be able to see the different parts um, without the notes. So, all right, let's say we want to count by twos until we get to 50. So while the count is not equal to 50, that's our condition. Let's print the value of count. So we're going to count by two. Um, until we get to 50, system.out.println count. That's our body again. And then instead of saying count plus plus, we'll say count plus equals two. That's where we update the loop variable. And then I'm going to copy and paste the done thing again. So type, compile, and run this example as well. I'm going to run it too. All right. It is counting a little higher than 50. Okay. Um, what I've done here is I've written what's called an infinite loop, a loop that never stops. We all do this all the time. When we do this in BlueJay, if it doesn't just crash because we run out of memory, 
you can press this little reset arrow here in the lower right corner of your BlueJ project window, and that will reset your Java virtual machine, which will stop your running program, okay? Um, so let's capture this. This is something that we all run into, so I wanted to show you right away. This is an example of an infinite loop. Ta-da! Um, we write infinite loops for all sorts of different reasons. Sometimes we miswrite our condition um, such that it could never possibly be false, which is what we did here. Count will always not equal 50. That is, count will never equal 50 and make this thing stop because we're counting by twos starting at one, right? We only have odd numbers. Um, so a better example, so I say a better condition would be something like while, whoa, while count is less than 50. In general, we try to avoid using um, equal to, not equal to in our loop conditions. Um, and it's a little bit safer to use like while something is less than or greater than, um, than not equal to. So um, another common mistake uh, that we make and we end up with an infinite loop is we just forget to increment the variable. So like count is initialized to one and stays there forever. And then our loop never stops. So those are common pitfalls that, that we're gonna run into over the next few weeks. Actually, I still run them to now. We're gonna run into forever, but we'll know how to fix them. Um, very cool. This is good. All right, I wanna show you an example of how we can trace through a while loop. Um, and uh, understand like how we do that. So let's do that together.